is doing well. I'm doing pretty good. Super busy, super worked all the time. College is kicking my ass. I'm killing, kicking college's ass, so. That type of thing. Just constantly on the move. Uh, but I got some records to talk about today. Um, I just thought, I, I really felt like doing a video. Got a little tea going here. It's October, October 2nd, so you know. Fall's coming around. Uh, yeah, it's the evening, as you can probably tell. I'm tired. That's not gonna stop me from doing a video. Um, I just got some new records that I gotta talk about. Oh, I, I've been holding this up, but I haven't talked about it. Miles Davis, In a Silent Way, is what is on the planet right now. I found this a long time ago. And I don't play it that much, and I should. It's seriously a great album. Got some pretty bad water damage, but the vinyl's really clean, so. Yeah, I mean, it's really classic. So, yeah. I think, yeah, I'll go through my, like, record store finds and t better finds. And then I have some garage sale stuff at the end that I, I would love to show. Uh, yeah, so let's just get kind of into this right now. So, it was my birthday the other week, and so I thought I'd do, go out and do a little birthday dig at the local record store, even though it's a bit pricey. I was just like, I'm gonna treat myself. I really haven't been buying many records at all. So, treat myself. So first up, found this Herbie Hancock Secrets uh, in the shrink. Sorry the light is not very good right now. It's It's night, as I said, so. Just relying on the lamps here, but yeah, anyways. Uh, super funky album. This is after um, Headhunters. This is after Thrust, after after uh, Manchild, so later 70s. Still great stuff. You know what really sold me is I looked on the back and I saw Benny Mop and played uh, Soprano Tenor, Sex Hello, Lyricon, and Bass Clarinet, and I was like, holy shit, gotta buy it. Because I love Benny Moppin so much. Yeah, super cool tender player from the 70s and late 60s, but mostly 70s. So yeah, I was happy. To, I'm always happy to pick up some uh, her, uh, like funky Herbie. So yeah, in the shrink, really. Just cause, just good music. And honestly, now that I'm living in a in my own house, I got to do chores and putting on something like that and cleaning the house is pretty fun so this next one i was pretty excited to find because i discovered this guitar player through um a different record uh new wave dizzy gillespie uh the guitar player on this is bola set set six i don't know i i don't know but uh yeah i really loved his playing on this so when i saw this i knew i had to get it Bullet set on uh, Bossa Nova. Uh, this is on Fantasy. This is a first night. It's a it's a first fifties pressing. Super clean for for that. Or it's late fifties, I think, with the Fantasy sticker, which is always super neat, I think. And yeah, there's not even a like song listing on the back, or on the well, there is a song listing on the label, but it's the same on both sides. And so, and it doesn't even say which side is which. I don't know, it's confusing. Good bossa all around. I love this guy and I, I love his tone on the guitar. Yeah, just some really good homework music and work music, just kinda, like I said, some chore vibes. But also just good thing to sit down and listen to. It's a pretty diverse genre in, in its constraints. So I really love to listen to this type of stuff a lot. So I was happy to pick that one up. This next one, I had gone in probably a week earlier, maybe a couple weeks earlier, and I had seen this and I was like, dang, that is a sweet record. I don't know if I want to buy it at the price it's at. So I was kind of talking to the guys. I was like, yeah, whatever. And they're like, all right, next time you come in, it'll be priced down. So sure enough, I come in for this dig and it's priced down. So it's all right. Win Kelly Trio. 
This cover is unlike anything I've ever seen. Just super unique. Like what what kind of jazz trio album has like a comic cover? Slightly questionable racially, but dope nonetheless, I guess. I don't know, it's the sixties, what do you expect? It's just people are yeah. Just yeah. So uh yeah, wouldn't Win Kelly's trio is too much. Yeah, baby, especially with five cats like Winton, Paul, Kenny, G uh, Jimmy, Kenny, and Candido. So yeah, it's got Kenny Burrell on here too on guitar, which is a really great addition, I think. And Candido on bongos. And they fucking swing on this shit. It is so swingy. Swinging. Just a fun session all around. On Verve. I, I'm very pleasantly... Uh, surprised with this or kind of just I'm pleased with it so yeah and pretty sure the vinyl is like super clean yeah 1963 I believe so yeah 1960 no 1964 um yeah so I was just I was just kind of kind of hyped to pick this one up and it's a great session great great session I'm very pleased with that. Uh, sorry about my nose. Uh, yeah, this next one, Cleopatra Jones promo copy. Cleopatra Jones is a '70s movie, black exploitation kind of stuff. Um, and yeah, this is a great iconic soundtrack. And I saw this and I thought about it and I was like, it's a promo. What the hell? So yeah, it's it's a it's a black exploitation like movie soundtrack, just like Superfly, you know that that kind of vibe. Uh, Magnum, that's that's kind of more of a Rocky record, but Rocky is in the genre, not because it's a freaking banger. But yeah, I'm Warner Brothers. I think this is 1972 or three, 1973. Yeah banging cover holy shit that is so bad uh sorry ran out of storage there on my phone so i had to delete some stuff but yeah cleopatra jones i was gonna say that i need the betty davis they say i'm different album i am i have been searching for that on the internet too for a couple years now maybe uh probably about a year but no i it's hard to find it's got a sick poster with the uh, OG too. But yeah, anyways, Cleopatra Jones, funky shit. Great stuff. Let's have to find this one. So that concludes that birthday dig type thing. Um, this next one, I went digging. Uh, I was in Minneapolis for getting this tattoo. No, it's in Northern, uh, Northern Pike on my own. But yeah, and uh, I thought I'd go visit some record stores. I only ended up going to one, but. Yeah, I was, I was actually really pleased with this with this big uh, post tattoo dig. <laughs> yeah, Swedish Snops, Charlie Parker. This stuff is classic. Um, I, this is a '80s Japan pressing, but I felt like I needed the music, and I don't have any bird. I realized that I don't have any bird, so this is the first bird record I actually have. And you know, it's it's a bird with strings. It's just like it's great stuff. Uh, yeah, like I said, 80s, so insanely clean, uh, and it sounds really great. This cover is so captivating. Everyone loves this cover, and for good reason. It is a sweet cover, it has sweet music to go along with it. Um, yeah, uh, Miles is on here. There's a bunch of just alternate takes and stuff, because that's kind of how those records were. Uh, so yeah, there's like two takes of each song basically on here. Uh, yeah, great, great stuff though. I was, I was happy to find this one. I was like, I had actually been, I listened to it a little bit over the summer, so. It's always, it's always fun to enjoy a record, streaming, and then go find it. Go find an early pressing. That's that's just some of my favorite stuff to do. This next one, I was super pleased. Oh, okay. Sorry, I got a low battery notification. Better, 
they're kind of hurry up. But this one I was super pleased with. I was super happy to find this for ten dollars. Jimmy Smith, the sermon, uh, first stereo press. Um, sticker said, sticker said G plus. I beg to differ. Maybe my standards are too low, but I mean, it's got some dings, obviously, with a G plus graded record, and it's got some surface scratching for sure. But it's a blue note. It sounds great. This is a New York label. Uh, so not deep groove, but I mean, it sounds great still. And uh, the thing about it is this is a complete just blowing session. It's a, it's, the, it's just the guys from Blue Note getting together, probably drinking, have, having a good time, just playing the blues. <laughs> like that's all this record is. And it's awesome. Lee Morgan, Lou Donaldson, George Coleman on alto, Tina Brooks on tenor, Kenny Burrell, Eddie McFadden, Art Blakey, and Donald Bailey like why how would you not buy a ten dollar record that has tina brooks lee moore at all george coleman on alto man i was just floored and i put this on i was like yeah this is just the vibe for sure <laughs> i sound like such a uh surfer dude but it was the vibe take a little but yeah three tunes on here the sermon takes up one whole side, and then J-O-S and Flamingo are on the other side. Super happy to find this for 10 bucks. Killer. I love, I love this uh, stereo sticker, this old stereo sticker. Just looks so sweet. I don't know, I just love old stuff. Talked about it before, but old stuff is cool. Uh, this next one I was also super, super happy to find for $10 again. This, I, by the cover, I was like, hmm. And I listened to the music, I was like, oof. Don't touch a book by its cover. I don't know why I was doing that, but, I mean, we all do. You look at a, you, you look at a whack cover, and it's just like, but it's whack. Then you put the music on, and it's J.J. Johnson, proof positive. And it's got, um... Uh, Harold Mayburn on piano, Arthur Harper on bass, Frank Grant on drums on one tune. Got J. Uh, J. J. Johnson, McCoy Tyner, Richard Davis, Elvin Jones on another. Can't beat that lineup. Can't beat that lineup. And they do some cool modal post bop type of stuff on here. And it's he swings so hard. J. J. Johnson is just he's one of those old cats. Uh, not a lot of people. I mean, that's complete. Uh, He's hailed for being one of the best trombone players, one of the best jazz trombone players of the bebop era. But I don't know. I guess I, for me personally, I just never really like I enjoyed his music or really even experienced it. I never really chose to listen to it. And this one, I love this record. This is a great, great record. Um, uh yeah i think this one was also listed as g plus and i would definitely say this one's g plus <laughs> like whew, got some scratches for sure you probably can't see it but yeah Lo uh so you got neo by miles davis that's the first track but lullaby of jazzland and the stella by starlight is so beautiful that's i mean that tune is gorgeous to begin with but jj's playing on it and everyone's everyone's comping on that it's great phenomenal uh then you got minor blues my funny valentine that's another swinging one and blues waltz is another swinging one i thought it was all blues and i look at the thing you know, it's blues waltz which is basically the same thing but uh that's all right so that was a f good find i uh i had i had some fun digging that day especially after uh if any of you guys have tattoos you know the feeling of right after you get a tattoo it's just kind of a kind of a cool moment Got this thing that's permanently on you. I don't know. JJ Johnson proof positive. Super happy to find that one. And then lastly, I'm gonna do uh, two uh, before the ground sale finds. Uh, I got two online things, which uh, one of them I showed. I made a video about. I would go check it out. It's kind of not one of my my best, but I would definitely still check it out because I compare Ferris Sanders' first record, Ferris Sanders Quintet to his newest record. 
And his last record, frankly, because I rest in power, that man has passed away just recently. And I know it hurt a lot of people through the community and it hurt myself because that last album was phenomenal. And I was curious to, I mean, what he would be due for the rest few years of his life. Because granted, he was 80 something years old. He was born in 1940, so yeah, 82 years old. Anyways, Pharaoh Sanders Quintet on ESP disc. This is a second 1969 pressing. And this thing is amazing. I see, I love this album so much. And I waited super long to get it. And the mail is stuck in the mail. It was confused. The package was confused. It was going here, it was going there. I finally got it. Incredible. So on the first side, uh, it's just a song by its side, which is how some of these kind of post-bop records go. Cause this was originally recorded in 1964. And this is, yeah, 1969 pressing on. But seven by seven on the first side and then um, Bethera on the second side, which are both kind of great things. It's kind of a bebop lineup. But the players on both things kind of experiment and kind of go out, but staying stay in the bebop while just kind of doing some strange stuff. And I mean, this is the record, this is Ferris Sands' first record. He got off the street. ESP is a very small New York label that was originally created to teach the Esperanto language. And so, I mean, as you can imagine, that's a very small label in New York and they just picked him off, up on the, picked him off Picked him up off the street. Can't speak. Um, and they blew this. They blew, and it's a great, great recording. And it's just cool to see one of his, like, a, one of his earlier recordings. Because, I mean, he's gone through many phases. And, uh, yeah, there's a lot of coal train in this. A lot of coal train in this. I'll tell you that. And, yeah. So, and that final, I usually don't really care about, like, specific stuff but i am st holy crap this thing is clean too this disc has got to be near mint yeah anyways this is so heavy this is such a heavy vinyl it's crazy so <laughs> it always kind of feels cool to sit on the thing because it, it must be i it must be like 200 grams i mean Oh, 180 gram pressing, which doesn't really mean much anymore because most things are pressed to 180 grams, but this is heavy, pretty dense vinyl. Anyways, Ferris Sanders Quintet, really great. I was super happy to get that one. Uh, that was the eBay find. I just sent in a low offer and he accepted it. So that was that. And this next one, I'm, I, uh, I've had this for a minute, a few months now, and I haven't had a chance to talk about it. And I'm, I was really, really excited to get this. I got this off Instagram. Um, I forget from who, but off Instagram, Dorothy Ashby, self-titled first, again, <laughs> it's, it's her kind of self-titled first album on Argo. And it is strange. This is a strange record because I bought this kind of with the uh, Afro harping kind of vibe in mind this is straight ahead jazz but harp in fact i'll go even further and she does some big band piano hits on here that sound like count basie and that just blew my mind that a harp could, like that she could even do that so that was that was really really cool and uh yeah swinging let's see what's the uh lineup on here so we got dorothy ashby on harp Got Herman Wright on bass and John Tooley on drums. So it's just a trio, trio session, but really, really great. Cover is immaculate. Um, I was really, really excited to get this one. I'll show you this really sweet blue Argo label. Uh, this isn't the cleanest vinyl in the world, but it plays great. Uh, I just think that blue Argo label is really cool. Um... But you got Lonely Woman, which is a swinging thing to open up the album with, let me tell you. And then actually they play Little Darlin, which is a uh, Count Basie tune. Iconic Count Basie tune. That every big band, every big band plays. Every uh, kind of youth big band, because I played it. It's a great tune. Love it. 
Um, what else? Django, you stepped out of a dream. Satin doll, another. That's a. That's an Ellington. Um, tune, but Dorothy Ashby, incredible harpist, one of the only jazz harpists, really. I mean, especially in the '60s, because this is 1962, or I think. So that is few and far between, and she's just a, she's just an incredible woman. And I, I need to, frankly, I need to talk about more women in jazz on this channel or women in music in general. That's just something how I feel. I feel like even listening, I do not listen to enough women. And at the end of the day, it shouldn't matter. It's just the music that you like. Because it is. The music I'm drawn to generally is just kind of male driven, which I hate. But I don't know. So, yeah, I just... I love this album. That's what I'm saying. Dorothy Ashby. Argo. All right, so those are my uh, pretty good finds. And then I'm just gonna kind of speed through these uh, garage sale finds because they're nothing incredible, but I, it's just always fun to find something in a garage sale. So the me and my girlfriend went out garage sailing and I was asking every, we went to probably 20 garage sales and I was asking everyone if they had records. Even if they didn't have them out, I was just like, do you guys have any records that you want to get rid of? Sure enough, one of them is like, yeah, so they bring up this box, a little about this big. So, Ahmad Jamal with voices, the bright, the blue, and the beautiful on Argo. And uh, Moody Blues, the lost sound, or the, he, what? In search of the lost chord. Sorry about that. Uh, this is kind of an iconic, just kind of like stoner, 70s type stuff. So, I mean, I give them for a buck peach, but buck a piece. Cannot talk. Um, so, yeah. Then another one I went to and they, it was this older couple. And it's like, you guys got any records? And they're like, hmm, should we dig out our son's uh, stuff? And they're like, would he be mad if we sold them? And I was like, well, I don't, I don't know. So they bring them up and it's decent stuff. I'm searching through it. And I'm just like, yeah, this is decent stuff because I guess an this is an announcement. It's just something that I've been percolating in my brain. I think it would, it's a kind of a big life goal of mine to start a record store. And doing garage sale digs like this with stuff that'll sell is essential. So that's just kind of how I feel about it. And that's exactly what happened. In fact, this is reminding me that I need to take a couple albums out of my shelves that I do enjoy. Um, that was from the same thing. But anyways, so they bring them up, uh, search through them. I, I get the stack and I think it turned out, I gave some of my rec, uh, some of, some records to my girlfriend, some Beatles, Beatles, Beatles single stuff. I just, I was like, she wanted them, so I was like, no, whatever. I think it came out to like 26 records, maybe. And they're like, they were like, would you do a buck a piece? Just kind of that thing. I was just like, I'll give you 30 bucks for the whole stack. And they're like, all right. So I don't know, it's just, and they were super nice people. Anyways, I'll quickly go through these. Smokey Robinson and the Miracles Live on Tampa. Tam, Tamla, sorry. <laughs> um, Simon and Garfunkel bookends. This is a, er, like a first German pressing. So, you know, it sounds good. I listened to uh, Mrs. Robinson on here, so. And it sounds really nice. It's got the, uh, Yeah, that's CBS label. That's cool. Um, I think, like I said, kind of record store stuff. Uh, Crosby, Stills, and Nash. Deja Vu. And Young, I mean. Uh, yeah, you see this, see this everywhere. Um, same with this, Abbey Road. I believe this is the first pressing. I'm not really sure. Uh, clean though, Abbey Road. Uh, the Rolling Stones uh, compilation. Keep in mind, it's a 30, $30 stack. This is a pretty decent stack. This is stuff you see in record stores and stuff that sells in record stores. So yeah, London, 
pretty clean too. Uh, yeah, Rolling Stones, just best of basically. Stevie Wonder, uh, the songs in the key of life. This has the pamphlet, not the seven inch, unfortunately. I'm still looking for that seven inch. Uh, but yeah, classic album. I was pretty, I was pretty happy to find anything, honestly. It's a, it's a garage sale. So uh, McCartney, Paul McCartney. Santana, classic, everyone's got that. Same with this, The Doors, or what's it called? Waiting for the Sun, got the cool hype sticker. Ram, which is currently something I'm putting on my wall, because I just love that cover. It's just a nice kind of aesthetic cover. Uh, yeah, so that's cool. Uh, oh, uh, Neil, Neil Young, After the Gold Rush. My dad loves this album, so it's always fun. Uh, Harvest, Neil Young. This is not supposed to be in there. <laughs> and Woodstock got the uh, gatefold type thing. Trifold, insane. I just, just that event was insane. And it blows my mind. Um, and then we got one that I actually put in my shelves because I wanted um, uh, cream wheels of fire. This is really clean for expressing. So, and it's just iconic, iconic music. Same with this one. What's going on, Marvin Gaye? First pressing, not that clean, but absolutely iconic album and essential for anyone to have. Last but not least, I had high hopes. I was like, holy shit, I found an early pressing of Velvet Underground and Nico. Pull it out. I mean, you know, you know it's been well loved when the fucking sleeve is just completely falling apart. And then I pull it out. Sure enough, warped as fuck. A, the, I, there's no salvaging that. It's actually not that scratched and stuff, but I, if I had a flattener, maybe. I don't have access to a flattener, so it's it's wall decoration right now. Got the peel away, Andy Warhol. It's a shame I can't play it. It's a shame. I mean, I guess I haven't tried to play it. I don't really want to, but uh, yeah. So, I, I mean, it's always fun to find one of these. Just iconic. And I have one that I can play, so I wasn't too beat up about it. At the end of the day, it was a buck. I think, it would, I think I would be pretty happy if I found one of these at a Goodwill for a buck. So I think about it like that kind of sometimes. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this one. I uh, hope you enjoyed those records. I uh, hope you all are doing fantastic in life. Uh, yeah, just happy listening and good vibes only. Peace out, y'all.